Early, we with got the out of we, with the champagne. I saw you with a funnel in your mouth at one stage, and someone just pouring in one of those jerobones. Yes. Look, can I say I'm a bit blurry tonight because of it? Uh, I'm not as clear headed as I could oh, be. Oh, I know. Not as focused. <laughs> not as focused. Not as sharp. <laughs> as could be. And uh, obviously, uh, one of the horses we we thought uh, Bold Bard was the real oh, danger the, horse in yeah, the cup. Yeah. And I think we made that abundantly clear in earlier shows at uh, Cream at the Carnival. That's right. And we were lucky enough to sight Bold Bard early. In fact, the first people we bumped into on course uh, were out the front of the Bold the Bard. The There's the old Bard himself. Yeah, that's right, in the hat. Yeah. And uh, what I like about so this. So much experience. So much experience. Uh, so much knowledge. Mm. And I uh, had to back Bold Bard because, you know, there's an old racing adage to follow the person you first see on co when you get on That's course. That's right, there is too. And so I had yeah. to back Bold Bard. Well, and the then... first person I saw was Kenny Callender. It's a pity he wasn't <laughs> running. <laughs> I'd have went back at him. <laughs> what an idiot old look. And, of course, uh, we, uh, well, we... We were lucky enough to be really up close when they jumped and we were lucky enough to have the cream cam on Bold Bard. Yeah. Here they are. And Reese Wheeler had the horse beautifully positioned early on, oh. as you can see. If only that was the, uh, you know, the winning post, he might have ended up third or yeah. second at a pinch. Or well, about 18th now, by the way. Sadly, the there's about another 2,800 metres to go. Yeah. And here they come back towards the turn. Is, uh, is that Bard out there uh, setting the pace still? I, think I don't I, think so. Well, I think Bard's now threatening, yeah. threatening to run uh, 19th. Yes. Oh, I might even be 16th. 16th now he's 19th yeah. now and he moves up yeah. to 16th with a lightning move. There's a real challenge happening there, isn't there? As we watch again a Maccabi Diva yeah. bursting out here, look how excited the connections are. Yeah. I wish that bloke could sit out in front. Yeah. Obviously he had a bet on Maccabi Diva. Yeah. And anyway, uh, Maccabi Diva scoots away with yeah. the cup there with She's Archie blistering away coming uh, down the outside. Yeah. And have a look at the sheer level joy. of excitement. Joy. Yes. It's a dream come true for these people yeah. to have their horse run. Look yeah. at the emotion there. Yeah, old look at that. Happy, isn't he? Oh. Mean, he's done it, H.C. He's, he's done, done it. it. He's done it. He's done it. You know, you know he, he's bought or bred a horse, uh, got it in the Melbourne Cup, uh, and it's come 16th. 16th. How many people can say that today? Well, but One. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, that's right. And let's not take away nothing from the expense. $25,000. $25,000. A third acceptance. Yeah. yeah. Never mind Which the... is so cheap, given the rich experience. Indeed. And you'll take so much out of that. He has been... Come used... back next year and yeah. think, well, maybe there's a 15th. That's right, that's right, that's right, for the bard. And he has been saving a lot of money uh, following John Eels' tips on DIY horse. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, he's done his farrying himself. I know he and, has. Uh, he's terrific, and he keeps it in a balcony in his... I know. You know, in his uh, yeah. 16th floor apartment. Yeah, there, it's, a, so it's, it's a pretty low-key operation, <laughs> as I understand it. <laughs> so, but full marks, I mean, they're the battlers we want in the Melbourne Cup. We do. We don't we want do. blow-ins coming in from anywhere else right. and just doing nothing. And speaking of...